Today we're looking at the Intolerable Axe. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So British Parliament had had enough. For years, they had tried to get the American colonies to pay taxes and follow British regulations. The American colonists had done everything to resist from writing petitions, boycotting British goods, and even tarring and feathering tax collectors. But now, after the Boston Tea Party in December of 1773, in which the colonists destroyed a shipment of tea valued at close to $1 million in today's money, the British said enough. British Parliament began to pass a series of laws that they called the Coercive Acts. In other words, laws that would try to coerce or force the colonies to obey. The colonists, of course, called them the Intolerable Acts because they said these new laws were couldn't be tolerated or were intolerable. So many of these acts focused on the city of Boston and the colony of Massachusetts, as that was seen by the British to be the hotbed of resistance. Now, before I get into what was included in the Intolerable Acts, I, I want you to pay close attention to these acts and then look at my video about the Bill of Rights and see how many of these coercive acts are addressed in the Bill of Rights. So first, Boston Harbor was completely shut down, with the exception of food and firewood being allowed to go in and out of the port. The port would remain closed until the colonists paid for the tea that was destroyed in the Boston Tea Party. Of course, closing the harbor resulted in hundreds of harbor workers losing their jobs. Second, the Massachusetts colonists were forbidden from holding town meetings more than once a year. The British began to realize that colonists meeting together usually resulted in a protest or a riot of some sort, so they figured we'll just make it illegal for them to even be able to assemble. Third, customs officers and other British officials charged with crimes would be tried in Britain and not in Massachusetts. Now, you might think this is not a big deal, but when you consider what this really meant, it meant that British officials in the colonies who committed a crime would then have to travel all the way back to Britain before facing trial. And that would take several weeks, if not months, and by that point, the details of whatever crime they had committed would probably be lost. But also, they would be put before a jury of British jurors jurors who would more than likely side with the British official. To the colonists, this basically meant that British officials could now get away with whatever they wanted without worrying about the possibility of being punished. Lastly, a new quartering act was instated, and more British troops were sent to Boston. Before the Boston Massacre, 2,000 British troops had been stationed there, and many colonists were forced to house soldiers in their homes and provide candles and beverages for these soldiers. Well, now again, colonists were going to be required to have troops in their homes. And to add insult to injury, General Thomas Gage, who was the commander of the British troops in North America, was appointed to also be the colonial governor of Massachusetts. Now, although most of these laws focused on Massachusetts and Boston, the rest of the colonies were very concerned. Many were saying to themselves, if, if the British can do this in Boston, then what stops them from doing it here? And so the colonies began to unite in support of Massachusetts, and in September of 1774, they call for a meeting of delegates or representatives from each colony to come to Philadelphia to discuss the events and come up with a unified response. Twelve of the 13 colonies sent delegates, with only Georgia not attending because they were currently involved in a conflict with Native Americans, and they were very dependent on British support. This meeting of the colonies came to be known as the First Continental Congress and is going to be an important step towards the colonies coming together in resistance to Britain and eventually declaring full independence. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.